Welcome to the Ripple Effect Martial Arts Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the podcast. Today we're going to go back in time a little bit and look at a story called Francis the Orange Belt Takes a Risk. Uh, As martial arts students and parents of martial arts students, everybody knows that courage is involved, right? You're taking on new challenges all the time as adults or as kids, and it can be a little intimidating. Uh, The instructors are there to be examples, be leaders, and help you get through those challenges, but a lot of it relies on you. And one of the challenges is performing in front of a crowd of people. And one of the places that happens is at a tournament. So this is a story about a student named Frances, and she is about to go to her first karate tournament and perform a new form. Um, I hope you all enjoy Francis the Orange Belt Takes a Risk. Dressed in full uniform as one of her karate school's newest orange belts, Francis stood in front of the tall mirror at home, pulling her hair into pigtails before practice. She'd spent the last week learning the new orange belt form, Dun Gun. Dun Gun had much more complicated moves than the gold belt form, Chun Ji. Pseudo Block, for instance. She'd heard of a pseudopod in science class, a fish or worm or something. Her dad wrote under a pseudonym, he said once. That meant a fake name. But a pseudo-block? Why anyone would want to fake a block and get hit, Francis couldn't figure out. She shook her head, bowed, and took position in front of the mirror. Back stance, pseudo-block, pivot, punch, turn, pseudo-block, back stance, oops, I meant front stance. Punch? Arrgh, it was confusing. Dungun had some tough stances, and even more turns. Mr. Hunter, one of the black belt instructors, had said it was like climbing an ancient mountain. Frances felt dizzy just thinking about it. Hang in there, she told herself. She reset and tried again. Saturday was tournament time, the first ever for Frances. She didn't know what to expect exactly, but she knew she needed practice, practice, practice. On Saturday morning, Francis entered the arena and saw a whole mess of martial artists in geese of all colors. The place rattled and thundered with growls and squawks and shouts. The air was thick and heavy like a jungle. Francis craned her neck and looked around for the blue of her school when she heard a smack and an awful groan. Whoa, Francis said, watching two black belts help a fighter back to his feet in one of the rings. She clutched her chest, wondering what it'd feel like to take a sidekick. My first tournament, Francis thought. Gulp. But Francis wasn't there to spar. She'd be competing in forms, and she decided on Chun Ji. She had it in her pocket, down pat, having just passed her test with it a week before. She wandered among the different rings, watching the sparring judges cover their eyes and shoot out their arms to assign points for strikes, watching the seated judges hold up numbered placards to score the forms. She stopped at a ring where lots of students from her school were seated. Inside, Mr. Hunter had just bowed in. Judges! he shouted. He turned and straightened his gi, a faded blue from so many years of training in tournaments. He tugged at the ends of his belt to tighten the knot and turned. Judges! He shouted again. He stepped forward. Proudly representing my school, my name is Eric Hunter. My instructor is Master Macy. With your permission, I will begin my form, Quang Gi. Francis watched Mr. Hunter's moves. Not quite swift like a snake's, more about power like a tiger's. His strikes shot out like slashes from a tiger's open paw. He moved into stances low and strong, rearing back to lunge like a tiger in slow motion, bounding over the tall grass. Still watching him finish the last strike, Frances felt a tap on her shoulder and turned her head. It was Master Macy. Frances, he said, I need your help. We're missing one orange belt on the demo team, and they're about to start their musical form to Dungun. He bent low, looking Francis square in the eye. How about it, Francis? Will you stand in? Francis felt cold. Dungun, she thought. It's so new. 
And with the demo team in front of everyone? Chunji was specific. Block, aim, punch, turn. She knew the pattern. But even after all her practice, Dun Gun suddenly felt like she grabbed a loose rock and tumbled all the way down that ancient mountain. Francis bit her lip. Master Macy straightened up to look over his shoulder at the demo team, moving toward their space on the floor. He looked back at Francis. It's now or never, Francis, he said. Will you do it? Francis eyed the stripes that stood out in red on the end of Master Macy's black belt. He had to take lots of risks to earn those, she thought. She straightened the ends of her crisp orange belt and looked up. Let's do this, she said. Master Macy led Francis to the stage, where she took her place at the end of the line of five students. She knew the boy to her left, a green belt. Wakeman, she said. I just learned Dungan. What if I mess up? Just follow me, said Wakeman. There'd be a lot of laughing if she began to blow it. All the kids in the ring, maybe the judges too, maybe her instructors and all the students from her school and her own parents and all the people in the stands would stop what they were doing and laugh and stare as she stepped all over herself, with even the little babies taking the pacifiers out of their mouths to point at her and laugh. Hey, look at that kid. She doesn't know a thing. Ha ha ha. Just then, Master Macy took the microphone. Attention, his voice boomed. The students straightened their backs and slapped their sides. Bow courtesy, prepare for Dun Gun. Sir! The music started. Frances clutched her fists and felt it give strength to her bones. Wakeman and the others threw their hands up for a pseudo block. So did she. They stepped with a punch into a front stance. So did Frances, right in rhythm. Turn, back stance, pseudo block. Francis was flowing with the moves. Before she knew it, they were bowing to applause. Francis walked off stage, a smile on her blazing, sweaty face. She saw Mr. Hunter through the crowd. His face was serious, his arms folded, eyes in thought. That was awesome, Mr. Hunter, Francis said. I saw your form. You must have gotten all tens. I didn't get all tens, said Mr. Hunter. Actually, I got docked because a few of my strikes weren't fast enough. He threw two punches. They looked fast enough to Francis. It was like they ripped the air. But I'll make them better the second time, Mr. Hunter said. That was only the first time you performed... What was it? Francis asked. Quan Gi, Mr. Hunter said. And the first time in a tournament, yeah. Francis thought, wow, Mr. Hunter knows lots of forms, lots he could have done anything from chun Ji to, well, who knows, and been perfect. But he took a risk on something tougher, something new. Nice job, Francis said. You too, said Mr. Hunter. They high-fived. Francis had to jump for it, bowed, and walked back into the tournament's roar. So I'm here with Elijah. And Elijah, how old are you now? Sixteen. And how old were you when you started black belt training? Uh, I was six years old. Six years old. So maybe your first tournament might have been seven, something like that? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so it's young, right? And different kids' experience, it, you know, personalities and everything are going to maybe set you up for initial success at a tournament. Maybe not. How would you say you felt about when you were that young, your first tournament, your second tournament, third, your first real competition that you remember? Were you on a bag of nerves or what? I think that the competitive aspect of tournaments can be really helpful because uh, I really, instead of feeling like I was pressured to do better than my peers, I felt like a huge sense of camaraderie. And I think that's helped me now where I can still feel a sense of competition with the things I like to do. Um, but I don't feel like I need to push other people down just to bring myself up and I can do things well with my peers. And that's how tournaments were able to help. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's not that you win and someone else loses, but you're encouraging other people to do their best and win too. How about um, in terms of goal setting, did you have any goals that you wanted to meet? Did the instructors help you find goals to try to meet? 
I think it was just a constant sense of, uh, you know, wanting to get to the next belt, wanting to, you know, even increasing places in tournaments, you know, uh, going to the black belt tests. I always felt like there was something I was working forward to, um, towards. <laughs> uh, and uh, now I think that with everything I'm doing, I can always think a step ahead. And I always have things I'm, uh, you know, working towards both academically and with my hobbies and with what I want to turn into careers, I think that I'm able to think the next step ahead uh, with goal setting. Cool. Uh, you've been performing quite a bit of music lately. And is there any um, parallel between the tournament environment? Lots of people, lots of cheering, um, all eyes on you kind of thing, and performing on stage? There's always a lot of pressure, especially afterwards. I think I'm able to deal with it a lot better. Um, I think that like being in front of people and uh, having a lot of pressure, it can feel really daunting. But in the tournaments, it was always people cheering me on, and I had my family, and I had my even the people I was competing against were always cheering and they were always sitting and, you know, not yawning or booing or anything. Um, and I think even now, um, with, you know, tougher crowds, it's really easy for me to see the people who are cheering me on and feel their energy. That's cool. Um, anything you'd say to a teenager or a younger kid if they're wondering, hey, is it time for me to get into black belt training and go to a competition? Anything you'd say to them that, from your experience that helped you compete at a higher level? I think I would really consider it for motivation because uh, even even uh, when I would struggle at tournaments uh, later, it was always just a stepping stone. And I think in the future, you can always think back and it's always like, look at how much I improved. And I think thinking about it now is if, you know, if I have a bad performance, if I, you have a bad tournament, it is always the stepping stone to something greater. And I think not viewing setbacks as something that brings you down, but as something that may bring you up in the future is very helpful because your first tournament won't be your best one, and that is a good thing. That's cool. Thanks a lot, Elijah. Now, as a parent, maybe you're preparing for your first tournament this year. Maybe as a student or a parent, you've been to many tournaments so far. And this month, we've been talking about goal setting. And tournaments are a great way to try to achieve new goals and really get recognition for those goals right on the spot. Maybe you haven't, you've been to a tournament, but you haven't competed yet. Competition can be your first goal, just getting in to compete, not even aiming at winning a medal or a trophy. Um, you can also challenge yourself to do that. Maybe you got third place in forms at your last tournament. Hey, can you get second place? Can you get first? The instructors at a karate school, a martial arts school, are there to, they've been through it, obviously, many, many, many times, both on the competing side and on the judging side, which has its own challenges. Um, one of your goals can, at some point, be to help with the judging, which is always a really important part of any tournament. And actually a, a, a can be a very challenging part too because there's a, there's a lot on the line when you need to judge different competitors' performances and assign a score that's fair and that you can really stand behind. Um, altogether, it's really fun to be at a, the tournaments, to compete at the tournaments, to judge at the tournaments, and to see how far you can take what you've learned in martial arts and bring it to that setting. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at tournaments this year in Colorado and Florida. And for anybody listening outside of those regions, uh, just for fun, we hope you're having a great time performing, practicing, training in martial arts this year and keep setting those goals to get better and better. 
Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Ripple Effect Martial Arts Podcast. Find podcasts and more at rippleeffectmartialarts.com.